G'day, my name's Mitch Dane, and at the moment we're sitting on the flight deck of an Alliance Airlines Fokker 50 turboprop aircraft. This particular Fokker 50 is a reasonably modern and advanced aircraft, incorporating electronic flight information systems and flight management systems into what we professional pilots call a glass cockpit. These modern technologies allow pilots to accurately and safely conduct all stages of a flight, including instrument approaches. So with all this modern technology available, you might ask, what can possibly go wrong? that an accident or incident may eventuate? And the answer is simple. While engineering and technological advancement of modern day airliners continues to enhance safety, there is one critical piece of the puzzle that has remained largely unchanged, and that is us, the pilots. To put it simply, if God had wanted us to fly, he would have given us wings. And there are many factors, both physical and psychological, that can have an adverse effect on a pilot in the in-flight environment. One of those such factors, which covers a broad range of topics, is visual illusions. And I'll now hand you over to one of my colleagues who will explain to you the various visual illusions that can be experienced by a pilot in the in-flight environment and the effect that those illusions have on a pilot. Thank you and enjoy the presentation. As a pilot grows accustomed to a particular runway, in our case Archer Field, other runways may play tricks on their perception. For example, here we have three different runways. One of them is the Edwards Air Force runway, the widest and longest runway in the world, used for the space shuttle. Second is Salvas Runway, the shortest commercial runway in the world. The last two pictures are from the Kuchevor Runway, which is the steepest runway in the world. They all have been taken at the same distance and altitude, however we perceive them differently. The wide runway appears to be closer, which can cause the pilot to increase their altitude in the glide slope and land further down the landing threshold. On the other hand, the short runway may cause the pilot to feel they're too high and fly a low approach, landing short of the runway. The pilot will think the runway is too short and feel too high if the runway has an uphill slope. The opposite if the runway has a downhill slope. As a consequence of this, a pilot might have to abort the landing and go around. With experience, preparation and trust in your instruments, prevention will occur. The photokinetic effect is best demonstrated by standing in a dark room and staring at a single light point for 6 to 12 seconds. Eventually, the light source will appear to make small, jagged and erratic movements, when it is not actually moving at all. In more advanced stages, the autokinetic effect can, be, can lead to erratic but minor head and body movements as the person tries to realign with the moving object. I am sure that everyone in here has noticed the effect take place when looking at a single light source in the dark, maybe while looking at the star at night. But what causes this illusion physiologically? Let's have a closer look. When the eye focuses onto a single light point within darkness, it loses the ability to focus on other sources. This causes the eyeball to make small jerky movements, which in turn makes the image projected onto the retina make small movements as well. The brain, which receives and interprets the picture from the retina, deduces that the cause of this movement must be from the movement of the object itself. As we know, this is not the case. A method of prevention includes making sure that one focuses the eyes on a number of light sources continually, instead of fixating on one point. In addition, periodical glances at the instruments can help readjust the eyes and focal length of the lens. The most common acuity problem is empty field myopia, a condition caused by the lack of focal points in hazy or dark conditions. During these conditions, the lens of the eye is incapable of focusing light from an entity onto the retina. To see something, for example another aircraft, there must be stimulation from the image. During dark situations, there are no stimulations from the image and therefore the eye enters its resting state, focusing at a point between 5 to 20 feet in front. Nearsightedness can prevent one from observing other aircraft that would otherwise be seen in a clear conditions, or if myopia correction methods were practiced. To prevent empty field myopia, it is recommended that staring into space be avoided by consciously focusing on objects beyond 20 feet, such as wind tips or cloud edges, and distant visual cues at or near the horizon. By doing so, relaxation of the ciliary muscles occurs, stimulating the eyes to establish distant focal points. Essentially, the prevention of empty field myopia is an incentive to perform effective and continuous scanning. The black hole illusion is experienced at night without reference to the horizon. 
On this type of approach, there is a lack of visual cues to the landscape surrounding a lit-up runway, thus making it difficult to orientate yourself on approach. The most common mistake made in these conditions is the pilot begins a steep descent due to the sudden realisation they have overestimated their glide path on approach. This will lead to a lower than normal approach. Another misconception is the pilot believes that their aircraft is stable in straight and level flight, and it is the runway that is positioned oddly on the landscape. In actual fact, the aircraft is not straight and level, but at an unusual attitude, as seen in the picture. Situations where the black hole illusions can occur are near brightly lit cities and aerodromes that are surrounded by unpopulated terrain, such as deserts or forestry areas. At night, we are further handicapped and susceptible to illusions by losing our clarity and colour vision as scotopic vision takes over, and the responsibility of sight lies with the rod cells in the retina. Depth perception illusions comprise the brain's ability to determine relative distance from visual cues due to atmospheric conditions that interfere with light transmission. Atmospheric conditions that impose our depth perception are fog, haze and whiteout conditions. Fog and haze obscure terrain from avoidance and navigation. In these conditions, objects appear out of focus and the contrast of the surrounding environment is dramatically reduced. Consequently, determining distance is difficult especially height above the ground and distance from the end of the runway. Ground lights viewed in these conditions are dramatically diffused, creating the impression of being further away. This induces a tendency to a shallow glide path, decreasing the probability of a precision approach. Whiteout conditions are comprised of atmospheric and blowing snow. Atmospheric whiteout occurs when the terrain is covered with snow underneath overcast skies. In these conditions, shadows will provide texture to the topography and the horizon are eradicated. Blowing snow produces the same illusion in addition to disrupting visual contact with the ground. The visual illusion has caused several aviation accidents, in particular Air New Zealand Flight 901 that had 257 fatalities. Blackouts and death perception illusions have a significant effect in flight and have deadly consequences. In prevention strategies and personal lines of defence are not implemented. The pilot in command should be aware of the possible illusions that may arise during a particular flight. Visual illusions pertain not only to eyesight, but your perception of what you should be seeing. Without a point of reference, which we can see, with our eyes, we must rely on our vestibular system, which orients our bodies according to gravity. However, our bodies are not adapted to flight and the effects of flight. Inside our ear, we have the otolith organs, which control our spatial orientation and balance, with sensory hairs which react to stimulus such as tilting and acceleration. However, if the stimulus becomes constant, then the hairs will return to equilibrium and the person shall perceive normal conditions. These effects are described as oculogyral or oculogravic illusions. The oculogyral illusions can occur following aircraft manoeuvres that involve an alteration in any of the three principal axes, turns, rolls and spins. This alteration causes the otolith to transmit that an adjustment to the orientation has occurred. Yet, as the turn endures, the otolith will return to equilibrium, even though we have not left the turn. Due to the sensation of being in equilibrium, attained after a few moments in a bank or turn, is an illusion known as oculographic illusion, which can lead to a pilot mistakenly perceiving the orientation of the aircraft as straight and level, when in fact it's in a bank. For example, in a bank, the pilot is subjected to both centrifugal and gravitational forces, which create a resultant force that is slightly tilted from the gravitational normal. Obviously, continuation or a reaction to a misinterpreted effect is hazardous and then reliance on instruments when sight is not our primary sensory. Flying instruction draws attention to the dangers of misinterpreting vestibular systems. Well, here we are again back on the flight deck of the F-50 and having now reviewed some of the various visual illusions that can affect a pilot in the in-flight environment, it is the responsibility of us professional pilots to be able to recognise, evaluate and discard any possible visual illusions that may impede on the safety of the flight. Thank you for watching this presentation. I certainly hope that you've enjoyed it, but more importantly, I hope that you've learned something from it. And on behalf of myself and my team of experts in the Griffith University Aviation Biology class, Thanks again and safe flying.